Because in the end, the people who pay that higher prices are you and me. It's the consumer. The price increases get passed along to the consumer. Sometimes the, the oil companies and the electric companies said, oh, if you give us free permits, we won't have to raise the prices to consumers. If you believe that, you'll believe, as I once heard Dan Rather say, that rocks grow, right? <laughs> you, when you s reduce supply of something, it makes it more expensive. The prices have to go up. And in fact, that's a key part of the policy. That's what gives people the incentive to invest in energy efficiency, etc. If you give the companies the, the permits, they just get to keep the money that the consumers pay in higher prices. So what happens is uh, the firms pass on the cost. Here I'm, I'm using $200 billion a year as a, as a ballpark figure of the kinds of numbers we're talking about. They pass off, off the costs of that are created by restricting the supply of fossil fuels to consumers. About $140 billion of that comes through direct fuel costs, gas for your car, etc., electric bills. The other is prices that work through the price structure of other firms that are producing food or you know, distributing clothing or whatever it is that also use energy. And the public then pays that $200 billion back and ultimately winds up in the hands of the fossil fuel firms. And the question is, where does it go then?